<laughs> Y'all, I just recorded chapter 24 already, but without my microphone turned on. So if I'm a little loopy right now, <laughs> we're going to take it from the top. Here we go. We are reading chapter 24 today, and my friends, you're going to be left on a cliffhanger at the end of this one, so brace yourselves. It's time. Camera's rolling, someone calls out. In five, four, three, two. Kind of feels like the intro to iCarly a little bit. He points at the man at center stage. The moderator, a slim guy with hair that looks like it's been glued in place, brushes a speck off of his tuxedo, adjusts his red striped tie, and begins speaking right on cue. Good morning, he says. Nope, that's not what it says. Good evening, he says with that perfectly modulated voice that announcers seem to be born with. My name is Charles Kingsley, and I'd like to welcome you to the Wiz Kids Southwest Ohio Regional Competition. All cheers sound. In two weeks, the winner of this competition will travel to Washington, D.C. to represent our area in the national championships. More cheers. We wish the best of luck to our young competitors, and the studio quiets down. The rules are simple, Mr. Kingsley explained. Teams will be asked 25 questions. Each correct answer from each four-member team is worth one point, so the maximum total team score is 100 points. He pauses so the cameras can show the scoreboard. Then he announces, The two teams with the highest scores from all the preliminary rounds will meet for what we call a quiz off, so point totals are critical. The winner of that final set of quiz questions will be declared our local elementary school level champion and will proceed to the nationals in Washington. The team that emerges as the winner will appear on a live national television and on Good Morning America the next morning. Cheers and applause. Our first two teams to compete today will be Woodland Elementary and Spalding Street Elementary. Take your places, ladies and gentlemen. The four contestants from Woodland and the other three members of our team walk to the testing area, waving for the cameras. Catherine rolls me into my position and makes sure I can easily reach the button. Then she gives me a quick hug and walks away. I'd like to take a moment, Mr. Kingsley says, to introduce a very special participant in our competition tonight. Her name is Melody Brooks. The cameras all point in my direction. The studio lights are incredibly bright and hot, and I blink rapidly, and I'm damp, and I'm sweaty. Although the other contestants will stand, Melody will be seated as she answers the questions. We've made adjustments to our answer board so that she can access the buttons, but nothing else. I hear she's a fierce competitor. I try to wave, but I figure I look goofy and wobbly, so I just put my hand down. Rose stands next to me, with Connor in the middle and Claire on the far end. I feel like I'm going to throw up, I hear Claire whisper. Don't you dare, Connor hisses. We're going to start off with a practice round so you can familiarize yourself with our button system. Is everyone ready? Which of the following is a mammal? A, cat, B, bird, C, turtle, or D, spider. It's a cat, for the record. Like, psst, it's a cat. Everyone, including me, pushes A, of course. The screens in front of us light up with the letter A. Don't you wish all the questions would be that easy? Mr. Kingsley asks, chuckling. Ha ha ha. Yeah, right. Remember two things, he reminds everyone. First, this is a team competition, and second, this is not a test of speed, but of accuracy. Teams get more points if all four contestants come up with the correct answer, and the two teams with the most points meet for the finals. Are we ready? Ready, the seven contestants answer on stage. I start to write and hit the word ready on my board, but I just decide to concentrate on the contest instead. Round one, we'll have 25 questions, so let's begin. Number one, I tense up. Here we go. The average lifespan of an adult mayfly can range from A, one minute to an hour, B, 30 minutes to a day, C, one day to one week, or D, two weeks to a month. Bing, bing, bing. Everyone hits their buttons. Once the answers are locked in, the readouts are displayed. Everyone on our team answered B. One person on the Woodland team answered A. Mr. Kingsley smiles and says, Woodland has three points and Spalding now has four with all correct responses. We can do this. I can do this. Bring on the next round. 
Number two, he intones. The battles of Lexington and Concord in the American Revolutionary War were fought in what year? A. 1774. B. 1775. C. 1776. Or D. 1777. That one's a little tricky. I press B, however, and so does everyone else, and the score is now 7 to 8. Mr. Kingsley continues. In literature, the word oxymoron means which of the following? A. A combination of contradictory words. B. The outcome of a sequence of events. C. An implied reference to a literary or historical event. Or D. A symbolic story or narrative. I'm fairly sure the answer is A, but that word could mean big-headed cripple kid who thinks that she can win on a national quiz tournament. When the answer is shown on the screen, Connor got it wrong, and so did two members of the Woodland team, so the score is now set at Woodland 9, Spalding 11. We're still up, but we have 22 more questions to go. The next question, Mr. Kingsley says, deals with math. Ugh, math. I'm dead meat. There are 2,357 paintings in an art museum. The museum has 124 rooms. Which is the reasonable estimate for the number of paintings in each room? A, 10, B, 20, C, 60, or D, 200? So this is kind of like a division question. You have to estimate if there's about 2,400 paintings and you can split them evenly around 120 rooms. How many paintings could be in each room? So this is what Melody's thinking. Yep, math, dead, rotten me. All right, let's see, I've got to visualize the museum and the rooms and the lovely paintings. How many are in a room? Ugh, I don't know, okay, divide what into what? Okay, I'm not sure, I'm just gonna say 60. When the answer flashes B, 20, I feel like the dumbest person on stage. But Rose got it wrong too, and so did two kids on the Woodland team. The score stands at 13 to 11. By the time we get to the 25th question, I'm sweaty and thirsty, but I am pumped. The lead bounced back and forth between the two teams for a couple of times. Sometimes they were in front of us, and sometimes we forged ahead of them. I got most of the language arts ones right, but the math questions really stumped me. Connor can't spell, so he missed several of those questions. Rose is weak in history, and Claire has trouble with science. The Woodland team's about the same. Some kids are good in some areas, and other kids are good in other areas. We now come to the final question in our first two teams, Mr. Kingsley announces, and he clears his throat <clears throat> and begins. A weather event that measured 6.5 on the Richter scale would be an A, tornado, B, hurricane, C, earthquake, or D, tsunami. Do you think you could get this one right? Do ya? Bing, 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 bing! I punch C, earthquake, and I relax. I do not have a tornado spaz. Connor, Rose, and Clear got all the final question correct as well, and two people on the Woodland team answered Hurricane instead. When the results were tallied, our team had a total of 81 points. Woodland ended up with 77. Congratulations, Spalding, Mr. Kingsley says with a polished smile. The two highest scoring teams will meet for the final round later tonight. Good luck, and we hope we see you again. Victory! for round one. As the show breaks for a commercial, we're all escorted to a special waiting room in the back. The students from Woodland look really disappointed. That's it for them in the whole competition. All they can do now is watch the second two teams as they head to their stage for their session under the lights. Mom, Dad, Penny, Mrs. V, and Catherine are all waiting for me in the back room, hugging and kissing me like I won the lottery or something. Catherine does a little happy dance. Dad tells me he filmed the whole thing on his camcorder. You rocked, Melody, Mrs. B shouts. I am so proud of you, sweetie, my mom says. Can I have a Coke? I type as I quickly as I can because I feel breathless. Everyone laughs as Catherine rushes to find me a paper cup for the sodas that are sitting on ice in the waiting room for the contestants. Mom pours dribbles of the ice cold Coke into my mouth, one sip at a time, making sure I don't spill on my shirt, but I am so thirsty. I don't even care that people from the other teams are staring at me. Mr. Dimming, after talking to Rose and Connor and Claire, bounds over to us, beaming. 
This is such a thrill, Melody. You are amazing out there. I am so proud of my team and I am extremely proud of you. Thanks, I type. What's next? Well, we wait for the next teams to compete, then we'll meet and beat the other high-scoring team and pack our bags for Washington. Don't pack yet, I type with a grin on my face. Oh, I've been packed for ten years, he tells me. I've just been waiting for the right team, and this is our year. I know it. He wanders off to look at the other parents. I never really thought about what teachers dream about. I had no idea what a big deal this was for him. Rose comes over and squats down next to Penny. I like your hat, she tells Penny, who's holding Doodle closely and wearing a blue polka-dotted hat with a red feather. <gasps> Wozy, Penny says gleefully. How's my favorite baby girl, Rose says in her whispery voice. Wozy, Penny repeats. You did really good, Melody, Rose says to me. You too, I type. Do you think we have a chance for the finals? Yep. And Washington? Yep. And being on Good Morning America? Oh, yeah. Claire stays on the other side of the room with her parents, but Connor ambles over and stands next to Rose. You're okay, Melody, he says. You beat me on a couple of those. You rock in math, I tell him. I know, he replies with a grin, but I still can't spell. I hope they don't have any spelling questions in the finals. Ooh, I gotta go to the bathroom, Rose says suddenly. I am so nervous about the finals. She hurries out. I know what she means. Butterflies, moths, giant bumblebees are fluttering inside of me. When we were on camera, it felt like it just took a million years to complete our round, but in just a few minutes, the second set of contestants come back to the waiting room. The school with the little crowns won round two with 79 points. Then, within another half hour, Edison Elementary clinches the third round with a score of 80. Finally, a school called Perry Valley wins the fourth round with 82 points. Just one point less than us, more than us. I watched them, Mrs. V tells me when they troop back into the room, excited and victorious. They're really good. Should we worry? I ask. Of course not. Your team's the best because they've got a secret weapon. You. Suddenly, there's a rush of activity in the room as the stagehands come to get us. Perry Valley and Spalding Street, we need you back on camera for the finals. You are our two top scoring schools. Congratulations. We hurry back to our places. The lights seem brighter this time. Mr. Kingsley returns to his position, gets his microphone adjusted by the stage crew, and shouts, Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the final round of our regional Whiz Kids competition. The winners of this round will represent us all in Washington, D.C. in just two weeks. All members of the winning team, along with their chaperones, will receive an all-expense-pays trip to our nation's capital, three nights in a hotel, and tours of the city. Trophy! Trophy! Someone in the audience yells. Oh, the famous Whiz Kids Championship Award. The winning team in Washington gets to take home a huge golden trophy. They receive a guest appearance on Good Morning America, and their school will receive a check for $2,000 to be used for academic endeavors. Lots of whoops after that. Let us begin, teams. Are you ready? Ready, they all reply, and I'm ready too. Whew. Left on a cliffhanger. We don't know what's gonna happen next. You're gonna have to wait and see in the next chapter, but for now, answer that comprehension question.